Yo dije que lo agarraron. We like to watch shows like Narcos and marvel at the hardcore world of cartels, but there's nothing badass or cool about cartel kingpins. We shouldn't glorify people like Pablo Escobar or El Chavo. They're real-life monsters who took pleasure in torturing and killing their enemies. Sometimes they even kill innocent women and children as a way to punish a rival cartel member or police officer who refuses to do their bidding. Let's explore the most brutal ways El Chapo punishes his enemies, but be warned, the the following video discusses very graphic details of torture and murder. In the world of drug cartels, violence and reaching the top are closely intertwined. The more brutal you are, the more you intimidate your adversaries and manipulate authorities into submission. The case of El Chapo is no different. When he started working for the Guadalajara cartel in the late 1970s, El Chapo became famous for his state-of-the-art tunnels. But he was also famous for his zero-tolerance policy on betrayers, and in his eyes, betrayers were anyone from an employee who didn't deliver the quotas to a police officer who didn't accept the cartel's bribes. El Chapo's zero-tolerance policy meant these men would get tortured and killed. To him, this was the only possible punishment. As the years went by, El Chapo established his own cartel, the Sinaloa, and made a name for himself as one of the most brutal men to walk this earth. In 2008, a video would emerge that would leave even the most seasoned detectives in utter shock. <laughs> This was a man known as Israel Rincón Martinez, aka El Guacho. <laughs> Israel used to work for the Sinaloa cartel, but at the time, El Chapo was in an all-out war against the Beltran Lebia cartel. This was quite normal. Most of the time, cartels are fighting each other over turf, power, and smuggling routes. What's also normal is that sometimes, Sicarios change sides during the wars. This is what Israel did to El Chapo. This was the ultimate betrayal. Soon after learning about this, El Chapo had Israel kidnapped and taken to one of his hideouts. Israel would be subjected to some of the most vile torture imaginable. And what's worse, El Chapo was there watching along with his eldest sons. Indeed, Los Chapitos were groomed from a very young age into terrifying people. Brincon was electrocuted and his teeth were removed with pliers until he passed out. That's when a doctor intervened, reviving Israel so that he would feel every minute of torture. It was later revealed during a trial that this was one of El Chapo's standard torture procedures. He always had a doctor on his payroll, making sure his torture victims lived through all of the horrendous pain until their hearts gave in. Israel was tortured until he died and it was all filmed and uploaded to spread fear online. Sinaloa's rivals had to know who they were messing with. This was happening in the late 2000s when El Chapo was on the run. He'd escaped from prison in Mexico in 2001, and he would hide in the mountains and lay low for 13 years until his 2014 arrest. However, El Chapo couldn't help but come and see his enemies get tortured and killed. This could only mean one thing, he enjoyed seeing others in pain. It was during his others' trials that El Chapo's worst torture methods were revealed. In 2017, El Chapo stood trial in the United States for a plethora of charges. Among them were murder, money laundering, and of course, running Mexico's most powerful drug cartel. A long list of former Sinaloa members testified against him. Lastly, it was Memin's turn. Isaias Valdez Rios, also known as Memin, was the final cooperating witness called by the prosecution to testify against Guzman, the last of a parade of former friends, associates, and underlings to point a finger at Guzman since his trial began in November. Memin was El Chapo's guard for a long time before he decided to turn on him. His testimony against El Chapo was so graphic that Judge Brian Cogan once interrupted him saying, could we have less narrative please? In 2006, El Chapo's men brought a rival cartel member to one of his mountain hideouts and interrogated him about his cartel. When he arrived at El Chapo's place, the man was already covered in burns made with a cigarette lighter and a clothing iron. El Chapo complained about his condition, then proceeded to put him on ice in a chicken coop and leave him there for days until his wounds began to fester. We told Mr. Joaquin that this man had a bad odor because he was decomposing in a way. Every now and then, El Chapo would ask him questions about his cartel. When the man didn't give an answer that El Chapo wanted to hear, El Chapo would shoot it, but not in a lethal area. Only after the man was more a zombie than a human being was El Chapo ready to kill him. He had Mamin dig a hole and then drag the prisoner 
to the hole's edge. After asking him a bunch of questions, the man shot him and pushed him into the hole. The prisoner was still alive, gasping for air, when El Chapo Sicarios buried him and El Chapo watched, proud of himself. A year later, El Chapo received a gift from his Sicarios, two Los Zetas men. According to Memin, El Chapo personally beat them for hours until they were limp as rag dolls. They were completely limp like rag dolls. Their bones were totally broken. They could not move. And Mr. Joaquin still hitting them with a branch and his weapon too. Meanwhile, El Chapo had his Sicarios prepare the men's deaths. Guzman ordered his men to dig a hole, Valdez said, and fill it with wood and get a fire going. Then, tying the Zetas to the back of two ATVs, they drove the prisoners to the edge of the pit, where the pistoleros had gotten a raging fire going and dumped them on the ground. The men were conscious. They looked afraid. Guzman, holding an assault rifle, hopped off the ATV and put the shortened barrel of carbine to one Zetas's head and screamed, A chingare tu madre, or F your mother, Valdez said. El Chapo then pulled the trigger. Mamin was paid about 2,000 Mexican pesos, the equivalent of $175 per week. In exchange for this sum, he slept on the ground at night, was on call 24-7, and stood guard while El Chapo conducted his shadiest business. Sometimes I hardly ate. Even when Mr. Joaquin would rest in his cabin, I would try to sort of rest, but I'd have a small radio with me and he'd say, Mamin, what did so-and-so say? Mamin, say this to so-and-so. In January 2010, another story emerged, also when El Chapo was living on the run. Mexico's drug war reached new levels of brutality at the weekend when a gang member was killed and cut into seven pieces as a warning to members of a cartel. To drive home the point, the victim's face was sliced off and stitched onto a football. The second day after New Year's, 36-year-old Hugo Hernandez was kidnapped from the Sonora State and taken to one of El Chapo's hideouts and torture houses. A few days later, his torso was found in a plastic container in Los Mochis, another box had his arms, legs, and skull, but nothing compared to the sight city hall workers were subjected to. Hernandez's face, sewn onto a football, was left in a plastic bag near city hall. A note read, Happy New Year's because this will be your last. Reportedly, El Chapo had dismembered Hugo's body, removed his face, and stitched it to the football himself. This goes to show just how desensitized El Chapo is. He's not just a savvy businessman, he's also a monstrous criminal. But El Chapo didn't do the darkest bidding on his own all the time. During another ex Sinaloa member's testimony, it was revealed that El Chapo often employed his trusted hitman, Jose Antonio Yaguar Marufo, to do the most brutal kind of torture. Once El Yaguar crashed a wedding only to kidnap the groom, his brother, and his uncle, all three men were found dead in the bed of an abandoned pickup truck a few days later. The groom was an American citizen, and this earned El Chapo yet another serious charge by the U.S. It's unknown what started the conflict between El Chapo and this groom, but it was serious enough for him to destroy his wedding and his family. And traumatize his poor wife for life. El Yaguar was an expert in kidnapping, torture, and murder, and he would always proudly display his mutilated corpses on the streets of Mexico so as to instill fear in his enemies. He would leave a banner stuck to the body, warning rival cartels not to mess with the Sinaloa, El Chapo, or El Yaguar. Creepily enough, El Yaguar had a specialized murder room in his own home, soundproof so that no one could hear the men scream or beg for their lives. He even tiled the room and put drains around it to make the post-murder clean up easier. Yeah, these are the men that El Chapo trusted the most. In this world, the more violent you are, the more trustworthy for the cartel. Sadly, he imbued his own sons with this mentality too. In January 2023, El Chapo's son Obedillo was finally arrested for murder, money laundering, and trafficking tons of white powder, heroin, methamphetamines, and fentanyl. Judy, they are known as Los Chapitos, the four most trusted sons of the world's most notorious drug kingpin. As the I-Team has reported for several years, federal drug investigators here in Chicago consider El Chapo's sons in charge of the Sinaloa cartel that remains this area's largest trafficker of heroin, cocaine, and methamphetamines. Ovidio and his three brothers, Ivan, Jesus, and Alfredo, are considered the new leaders of the Sinaloa cartel, a separate faction from El Chapo's former buddy, El Mayo. Their dad might be in prison for the rest of his life, but since his arrest, the Sinaloa cartel only made more money, and the crimes got even worse. According to government records, Los Chavitos is just as brutal as their dad. Once information was obtained by these captives, typically through torture, these individuals were killed, either by or at the direction of the Chapitos themselves, and the bodies disposed of throughout the area. While many of these victims were shot, 
Others were fed dead or alive to tigers. Indeed, Yvonne and Alfredo own tigers, and it's safe to say they're not kept in ideal conditions either. As to the rivals they kidnap, well, they meet endings more gruesome than any horror movie can show. In 2017, two of El Chapo's sons kidnapped and murdered two Mexican federal police officers. The testimony was truly shocking. For approximately two hours, members of the Ninis tortured victim 5 by inserting a corkscrew into victim 5's muscles, ripping it out of his muscles, and placing hot chilies and his open wounds and nose before being shot dead by Yvonne Arquibaldo Guzman Salazar. Apparently, Los Chapitos' favorite torture methods include electrocution and waterboarding, and they do this to anyone, rival sicarios, police officers, and people who fail to pay debts. And to make matters worse, sometimes Los Chapitos test out the potency of their fentanyl on their prisoners. DEA Chief Ann Milgram said, death and destruction are central to their whole operation. The Sinaloa Cartel is a network that fuels violence and death on both sides of the border. As a result of El Chapo and other kingpins like him, many people in Mexico live in constant fear. Some even lose their families in the horrific cartel wars. El Chapo and Ovidio are in prison, but his other sons and so many other business partners are still keeping the Sinaloa cartel up and running. And they do this with brutal torture methods, manipulation, bribery, and murder. Do you consider yourselves kind of like terrorists? No, no, no más lo que hacemos, nada de, de otro tipo de acto contra la sociedad que esté mal. A couple of days ago in Culia, kind of police officer was kidnapped. I suppose to me that seemed like acts of terrorism, you know, if you're kidnapping police. And... Pues usted no sabe qué puede hacer el policía. Muchas veces un policía corrupto que hacen cosas indebidas. Pero alguna razón haber tenido para ese hecho, no, a nadie lo levanta nomás por, por puras ganas. Meanwhile, other cartels like the Jalisco New Generation become even more brutal so that they stand a chance against the Sinaloa. The most powerful is the Sinaloa cartel. Almost the 70% of the world is infected by this cartel. It's hard to see an end to this brutality, and El Chapo is partially responsible for it. Hey there, thanks a bunch for watching. What do you think about El Chapo's horrific methods? Do you know of any other violent cases in the Sinaloa cartel? Let me know in the comments section, and before you go, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.